Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with God's Spirit. Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Constant wills 
to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Word. The Old Testament lesson is written in the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis, beginning at the 10th verse. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
epistle is written in the 8th chapter of the letter of Paul to the Romans, beginning at the 12th verse. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first spirit, who have the first fruits of the spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
to St. Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not grow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Today we are delighted to welcome the Reverend Dr. Allison Fulby as our preacher. Allison is the priest in charge at All Saints Church at Sherburne and Dundas here in downtown Toronto, and they have long had an important ministry to the needy in the heart of our city, the ministry of care, of justice, and of mercy. We welcome Allison, and we pray for their important ministry. Good morning. About 12 years ago, when I was a student at All Saints Church Community Centre and didn't know any better, I asked one of our drop-in participants why he was on ODSP. I asked him what his disability was, and I'll never forget his response. He whispered in my ear, my disability is that I used to be an a-hole. And this guy was, and still is, one of the most faithful and holy members of our community. Now, I can't think of a better story to illustrate Jesus' parable of the weeds and the wheat. We are all a mix of good and bad seeds, weeds and wheat. And if we try to root out the weeds, Jesus tells us, we may well uproot the wheat along with them. Our mission is to allow everyone room to grow, to let God be the judge, and to trust that good will win out over bad. At first glance, All Saints Church Community Center is full of weeds. On any given weekday, our drop-in participants include people who buy and sell sex, drugs, and stolen goods, and many sell all three. Some seem like they're just doing it to survive, while others seem like they're doing it to control and exploit other people. But more often than not, the line between good and bad seeds is blurred. I have learned, for example, that there is a spectrum among drug dealers. There are the dealers who deal because they have criminal records and it's the only job they can get or the only job they think they can get. 
They're the dealers who deal because they're struggling with addiction and will die if they can't access the drug they depend on. And there are the dealers who deal and stick around in case someone overdoses. Not every dealer does. When the disciples ask Jesus if they should uproot the weeds, he tells them no, for in gathering the weeds, he would also uproot the wheat along with them. The weed to which Jesus refers is called bearded darnel. It's also known in the Bible as tares and colloquially as false wheat. Tares often appear in grain fields, where they wind their roots around other plants to such an extent that if you try to dig them up, you will indeed uproot the other plants along with them. Not only that, tares are impossible to distinguish from wheat until the wheat fruits. And if you eat the tares, you'll be intoxicated at best, dead at worst. It's quite poisonous. We will know the good seeds by their fruit, Jesus says elsewhere in the Gospel. And that's why he says here, let both of them grow together until the harvest. We see good and bad seeds enmeshed every day at All Saints. Although we don't allow violence or threats of violence in our space, we do allow known abusers into our main Monday to Thursday drop-in. Our Friday drop-in is women only. And we allow them into our main drop-in because if we restricted them, we would never see the women they abuse and the victims are almost always women. We would lose valuable opportunities to connect with and support these women, and they would lose the opportunities to grow. If we were to try to distinguish between good and bad seeds in our drop-in, many people would stop coming, and many people, including us, staff, and volunteers, would lose opportunities to grow. Besides, what looks like a weed might very well turn out to be wheat. One of All Saints' peer outreach workers used to sell drugs. She's very open about her past and how she used drugs, sold drugs, and did sex work. Her name, which I use with permission, is Janet. And after she began working with the All Saints social worker, Janet got counseling and permanent housing. And most importantly, she says, she felt cared about. She stopped selling drugs and doing sex work, and she is now, as she puts it, mostly clean. These days, she walks Dundas and Sherburn streets to connect with women sex workers and to share information about harm reduction. Her outreach work is meaningful to her and to the women in the neighborhood. She cares about them. She has reconnected with her family and she is content with her life. None of this would have happened if all saints had tried to limit supposed bad seeds from accessing our services. Janet's story shows that good seeds grow when we don't try to root out the bad. And that means we have to stop making moral judgments about other people. A weed may very well turn out to be wheat, and vice versa. Let both of them grow together is a call for inclusivity. I know inclusivity has been a challenge, both for worshipping communities and for social service agencies during the COVID-19 pandemic. At All Saints, online services have been a no-go because very few members of our congregation have computers and some don't even have phones. And we've had to limit the capacity of our drop-in to allow for physical distancing. Still, we practice inclusivity by allowing universal access to all services save the drop-in space itself. Anyone who comes to our door and asks for a meal or a snack or something to drink can have one as long as we have enough. Anyone can see a nurse, and anyone can have safe injection kits, as many as they want. I said earlier that if we tried to distinguish between good and bad seeds at All Saints, many would lose the opportunity to grow. In fact, everybody at All Saints would lose the opportunity to grow. We would lose the opportunity to experience God's kingdom in our midst. God's kingdom is not a perfect field of healthy, good plants. It's a mess of weeds and wheat and much else. It's a place where Jesus has so reversed our ideas of good and bad that we are saved from self-righteousness and snap judgments. We are saved from hypocrisy. God's kingdom is a place where we welcome all people and where we all grow together. God's kingdom, in my mind, is a place much like all saints. 
on earth. Let us confess our faith as we say. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, Begotten, not made, being not one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and when was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was a man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious fight. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sit upon the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I, and I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who stayeth by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and for the life of the world to come.
praise your abiding guidance, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. Let us pray today saying, Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. Holy God, help us to remember in our prayers through this week the faithful of your church on earth. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, let us remember the Episcopal Church in the Philippines and the Most Reverend Joel Adawag Pachau, Prime Bishop of the Philippines. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, let us pray for our area Bishop Kevin, our diocesan Bishop Andrew, and the Nottawa Sega Deanery. In our outreach and advocacy cycle of prayer, let us remember St. Margaret New Toronto, St. Mark Midland, and St. Mark Port Hope for their community and justice work. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. Spirit of justice, help us to make and keep this country a home for all its different peoples and grant to our government and all its representatives imagination, skill, and energy that there may grow amongst us compassion and peace. Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God, you made the universe with all its marvelous order, its atoms, worlds, and galaxies, and the infinite complexity of living creatures. Grant that, as we probe the mysteries of your creation, we may come to know you more truly and more surely fulfill our role in your eternal purpose. Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. Lord of all, we pray for the city and those who live here, the poor and the rich, the elderly and the young, those of every gender and orientation, every race and ability, that you will show your goodwill to all. Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. We ask you to sanctify, O Lord, those whom you have called to study and practice the art of healing and the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit, that by their ministries the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. Look with pity, O Heavenly Father, upon those in this land who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Have mercy upon us and help us to eliminate cruelty wherever it is found. Strengthen those who seek equality for all. Grant that every one of us may enjoy a fair portion of the abundance of this land. Heavenly Father, hear and have mercy. Healing God, bring your comfort to those afflicted with illness, pain, and disease. Bring wholeness to those suffering in mind, body, and spirit. We remember especially today those we name now, silently or aloud. Finally, Father, we remember those we love but see no longer remembering today those whose names are written on our hearts. Michael. And those whose names are known to you alone. 
Eternal rest grant unto them, Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through your mercy, rest in peace. Loving God, open our ears to hear your word and draw us closer to you, that the whole world may be one with you, as you are one with us, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Assist us mercifully, O Lord, in these our supplications and prayers, and dispose the way of thy servants towards the attainment of everlasting salvation, that among all the changes and chances of this mortal life, they may ever be defended by thy most gracious and ready help. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, almighty God, that the words which we have heard this day with our outward ears may, through thy grace, be so grafted inwardly in our hearts that they may bring forth in us the fruit of good living to the honor and praise of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of mercy transform you by his grace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you all. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.